Young, and I would like to welcome you to this episode of Race Face Spotlight. Today, we're headed to Scandia, Minnesota, where we find 15-year-old Midwest Truck Series driver, Joe Valento. Joe, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing well, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Joe, can you share with the viewers how you got started in racing? Well, it started at a local go-karting track, just like a local fun anyone can go to. I finally turned eight years old, and I was finally old enough to go there, and they had kind of like an open arrive and drive kind of a thing. And so the younger kids could go try it out, and I went and tried it out, and we did really well, and I liked it. So that eventually led to my dad contacting the local dirt track that runs quarter midgets, and us going out there to test one and try it out, and then me falling in love with it. And then eventually, at one point, having seven of those things in our garage and just took off from there. That's a great story. This year, you have been doing mostly Midwest Truck Series racing, but have a few INEX Legend car races thrown in. Of the two, which do you prefer? I like the truck just because it's a full-size vehicle, and it's a lot of fun running with Kelly. But the Legend car definitely has ups too because that gets to run on road courses once in a while. And I really enjoyed when we ran on the road course in Charlotte last winter. And that'd be really cool for us to go run there again. I really liked running. We actually ran a portion of the Roval um, track on it, on the layout. And that was really cool. So, I mean, both have their ups and downs, but uh, I really like the Midwest truck. Can you tell us a little bit about the truck that you are racing? So basically the engine is kind of like your standard late model motor. And then the body is kind of similar to like the NASCAR truck body. So it's just like a late model motor with a tr the NASCAR truck body. You're currently racing for Kelly Byers Racing Performance and there have been a few big names in that truck over the years. So what has it been like racing for Kelly? Yeah, so some of the recent names, uh, Sam Mayer and Ty Majeski, both very well-known drivers. And it's been really cool. I mean, Kelly, he knows what he's doing. He, he uh, has a really good truck for me every time I get to the track, and we can just unload quick, and I can just learn the track, and we can get dialed in and have it pretty fast for every, every feature race. I mean, we've been consistently top 10 truck, and we can usually get the truck pretty dang fast by the feature race. And I think... Just it's we've just had a little bit of bad luck lately, and I there's a couple times where I know we could have had good finishes, but just bad luck, like such as at the Dells where we were leading and we had a two second lead, and just the motor let go, and it it just doesn't happen with 602 crate motors. I mean, there's guys that have five seasons on the motor, and that motor before I had started running it this year had about seven races on it, so it's just we've had really good speed every time we come to the track, just haven't been able to put that win together yet. Even though you have had a little bit of that bad luck, you have had some great runs so far, and it seems like the truck has been fast everywhere that you've raced. Can you walk us through your season so far? Yeah, so it started at Madison where we unloaded and they did a Saturday-Sunday race because it was the Joe Shear Classic, so they had all the super late models there. So we did a practice Saturday and race Sunday, and we started out with good speed Saturday. We were second quick, and then... When the racing came around Sunday, we unfortunately got in that tangle and that ended our, our good run for the day. But then we went to uh, Milwaukee, the Milwaukee Mile, which that was really cool. I mean, for me being under 16 years old and being able to run at a mile track was really cool. And we came away with a second place finish really close to first. So, I mean, we can't argue with that. And then we just progressively have, have been getting top fives and top ten finishes throughout the year. And it's just We've shown good speed, like I've said before, but just can't quite wrap up the win. With just our, we've just had a little bit of bad luck, but hopefully uh, we can turn that around for the last couple of races here at the end of the season. Can you give viewers a preview of your upcoming races? Uh, yeah, so in a couple of weeks, we're going to be at the Lacrosse Speedway over in Duclair, Wisconsin, and that's a big event. It's like about a, a three- to four-day show for Super late models, late models, basically anything 602 motors, and then the super late models. Um, it's a big, sh it's a big show up here in the Midwest. We get a lot of turnout, and uh, the trucks are racing Friday, and that'll be a good one. We went down there and tested earlier this season. That was my first time back in the truck this season. We found really good speed there. Um, 
you know, a, a cool track and old tires. We were turning really good last time, so I'm excited to go back there. And then also we have the Dell's Halloween race at the end of the month of October. And that'll be a good one because we had really good speed there this uh, this last time we were there. But unfortunately, with the motor going down, we couldn't finish the race. But I'm excited to go back there and show what we have. Well, good luck in those upcoming races. I also heard that you did some simulator training with Indy car driver Robbie Unser. What was that like? That was really cool. I was really... Uh, Really happy to be a part of that and really glad that he was able to take me in and do that class with me because I feel like I really learned a lot over the winter with that, doing that with him. Because I had never driven a full body stock car before. I just, the biggest car that I've driven was either a micro or a legend car. And those are almost half the size of like the truck. So being able to run with Robbie and practicing running weight bottles in different cars was really beneficial for like my car control, like race craft, and just like knowing, getting kind of the distance of how big the car or truck is, and then being able to go out there in the real life and take what I learned with him and being able to apply it to my real life racing. And it was really cool. We could we would run laps with him and do like mini races, and then we would take the data from our races, lap times and stuff, and then you put it on a graph, and we could see like my throttle position, my brake, when I brake and when I get back on the gas and like where my line was. And it was really cool to be able to like analyze that with the different people in the class. That's awesome. Thank you for giving us a glimpse into what that looks like and what that experience was like for you. You've been very involved this year with the Friends of Jacqueline Foundation and you've adopted a child that is battling pediatric cancer. Tell us a little bit about your new team member. Wyatt. Yep, new team member Wyatt. It's been a lot of fun hanging out with Wyatt. We've gotten to do some pretty fun things. Starting out at Elko Speedway for the night, he got to come and hang out. They Elko was really nice, and they, they gave us our own little suite, and we got to hang out with them, and got to do a little ceremony with them where we adopted them. And Dennis got to show the, the HBO video on the big live screen um, during the driver's meeting, so we all got to see that. That was really cool. And then we just got to hang out for the night, which was really cool. And they really liked coming to the track. And uh, hopefully they can make it to one of our truck races at the Dells here at the end of the season. But, yeah, it's just been really fun. And we also got to be part of their Make-A-Wish. Why it's Make-A-Wish wish to go see YouTuber Ethan and Cole down in Phoenix, Arizona. Um, I believe they do like a, a toy, a toy kind of like review thing. And uh, they got to go hang out with him, which was really cool. And we get to go with them to their Make-A-Wish uh, reveal, which was at Dave & Buster's. And we got to hang out and have some good food. So it was a lot of fun. And uh, the Friends of Jacqueline Foundation is just a really cool foundation to be a part of. I mean, you get to take someone who's been battling something through their life, and then you get to have some fun with them and show them the joy in life. That's awesome. I understand that you were awarded a 2019 Sportsmanship Award at Elko Speedway earlier this year, and that had a lot to do with your involvement with FOJ. Yep, Jeremy Johnson Sportsmanship Award. That was really cool for me to win, and it's, it's a little humbling because, I mean, it's kind of an honor to, to receive that award because it's just cool. The family um, had been, they had lost, a family member to a car accident 20 years ago and since then they have been giving the sportsmanship award out every year and it's just it's an honor to win it that's so great congratulations on that i know you are quite the outdoorsman so what do you do when you're not racing well during the summer i like to do my fishing i really like to get out and go fishing on the water and uh riding four wheelers i like to do here and there and then during the winter, it's snowmobiling. I mean, you just you bundle up and then you go out and ride on a snowmobile. So uh, is, is that your plan this winter? Rod told me once that you raced with ice spikes on your tires. Is is that also in your plans? Unfortunately not. I wish <laughs> I wish it was. That was my last race in a quarter midget uh, a few years back. And that was a lot of fun racing on ice. We, you take studs and then you put them in your tire and you put this uh, liquid on the inside where the air won't get out and you go out and you literally race on ice and it was it was a lot of fun what do your friends think about you being a race car driver yeah some think it's pretty cool i mean some really get into it i know there's a few people out there 
uh, of my friend group that watch NASCAR pretty closely, and they think it's pretty cool. You have a special relationship with your family, full support of your mom, sister, your dad. How much does that mean to you? A lot, a lot. My family's very committed to my racing. I know without them, I wouldn't be where I am today, whether it's just supporting me on and off the track or just coming to my races in general. I mean, I can't drive to my races myself, so my family has to take time off their weekend to take me to the racetrack, so I, I love them. I understand you also have a new addition to your family, and his name is Tucker. What kind of dog is he? A black lab. Yeah, Tucker. I'm a little surprised you haven't heard him bark, actually. <laughs> he's he's a quiet the whole interview. Guy. Seven months old. He's, uh, we're training him. We're, tr well, we're trying to train him anyways. No, he's a, good, he's a good dog. We take him outside, and we teach him, and we walk him around the yard so he learns the, the fence border and everything, and he's... He's a, he's a fun little guy. Dogs are always a fun addition to the family. Tell us something that most people wouldn't know about you. Hmm. I would have to say, even though I live in Minnesota, where it gets the negative 40 degrees out, I would much rather be living down south where it gets to over 100. <laughs> That's awesome. I, I can attest sometimes there's times that we wish that there were cooler days here, but I guess we all kind of want what we don't have sometimes. True. Would you like to give a shout out to your sponsors? Yeah, I'd like to thank Ardent Mills, Nitro Lubricants, Napa Auto Parts, Race Face Brand Development, the Friends of Jackson Foundation, uh, Kelly Byers Racing Performance, and High Performance Parts. Joe, thank you so much for joining us this evening. There you have it, what an amazing young man. To learn more about Joe, check him out at joevalentoracing.com. Follow him on social media, and don't forget if you wanna catch up on any of the Race Face Spotlight shows, you can do so at raceface.tv on demand. Until next time, I'm Brittany Lung, thanks for watching.